All right, hopefully you can see those marks that are still there just very slightly. There's a line here and a line there. They're directly on top of where the stick is. And I'm gonna go back to right where the inside of that wall would be, if I could still see the inside of it. And I'm gonna cut straight down all the way to the stick. Switch to my other tool. Straight down right over the stick. So you have a, a 90 degree cut straight down the top of the stick. And then I'm going to cut out a perfect square. And this is going to be the main opening for our whistle. You take your toothpick or needle tool, pull out that square, and you should be able to see the stick inside of that square. The next part we're going to do is cut the 45 degrees. So we have a 90 degree angle right here. We're going to go back and we're going to cut a 45 degree angle from the top of the clay all the way down to the stick. It should meet right where that square starts. I'm going to cut that wall out. because I was doing this demonstration, I made my 45 degree angle start just a little further back than I want it to. So I'm gonna take a little extra clay here and I'm going to reapply it to my 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to smooth it out right to the stick. So we have a nice smooth 45 degree angle and we have a square cut out of our clay. Now this is the fun part. I'm going to very slowly pull the stick out and I'm going to look on the inside. You should have a straight line from the top of your clay past the hole and then into the bottom. If you have a little lip there, push that down and smooth it out on the inside. I have just a little bit of an edge. So I'm gonna smooth that down and make sure the air hole is still clear. At this stage, you can test your whistle. Don't be frustrated if it doesn't whistle right away. Um, getting that 45 degree angle and the interior hole to be perfect is a little challenging. After you have your piece to whistle, you can add holes. If you add holes, you'll get different tones. So I'm just gonna cut out a hole here because I'm not making this whistle really pretty um, just because it's my demonstration piece. Uh, I'm also going to be cutting it open so I can show you what the interior um, of the whistle portion here looks like. So I made that hole just a little too large. If you add a hole, it can, uh, it can make or break your piece. If you end up making a ocarina hole and it doesn't whistle the way you want it to, you can adjust the interior of your whistle portion just a little bit or you can change the size and shape of your hole 
or you can fill your hole back in and move it to a different spot. There is no exact science of how to get the whistle to work properly. Um, it is all just trial and error. Uh, so adding your holes when it's leather hard or getting towards bone dry is always a bad idea because you can't really fill in or change that position as easily. So it sometimes works. Um, but that's the basic idea of how to make the whistle. From here you could do carving on the outside. So if you wanted to, um, let's say, create just a, a basic relief. Uh, I'm going to put a circle here because circles are easy to me. This is also a stage that you can uh, attach pieces like the tail of the tail of this mouse whistle was attached after the chamber and the holes were made. Relief, it is really important that you know how thick your walls were because that will depend on how deep you can create your carvings. As long as your clay is still in the leather hard stage, you can always slip and score and reattach. So what I'm gonna do now is grab my wire tool and I'm going to cut straight down the center of this entire piece so you can see what the uh, interior of the whistle looks like uh, per the, the whistling area. As you can see here, I have reinserted the stick into the cut in half ocarina and you can see the seam on the inside where I've attached the two halves. And you can see the square area that we cut out. The two really important parts for this ocarina is the bottom part and the top part of your mouthpiece. These should be straight in line with each other and a perfect 90 degrees. So if your bottom part, I'm going to adjust this a little bit and show you something that we don't want to happen. If your bottom portion comes past your opening, you're not going to get a very good sound. So if I take that out, if the bottom part of the opening comes past, you're not going to get a very good sound. So you want to make sure that is even and smooth. To do that, you can take your stick. You can take your stick and go straight down. And even that out. Notice they're perfect 90 degrees, top and bottom. The next important part is your 45 degree angle right here. If it is too low, all of the air will go through and straight out. It won't circulate inside of the ocarina. If it is high, where the line comes through, if it is too high, all of the air is going to circulate on the inside and it's not going to split. The splitting of the air is what's going to cause the whistle to work properly. So if your 45 degree angle is too high from where your mouthpiece is, it's not going to make it the proper noise. And if it's too low from where your line of air is going to be, it's not going to make the proper noise. From here, all you need to do is keep checking those two areas, the bottom portion here and your 45, moving them up or down, and then drilling your holes if you wanna create extra sounds. 